The favorite dictator comment uh, was reported by The Washington Post in a meeting at the G7, where uh, Trump was waiting to meet Sisi, and he reportedly said, where's my favorite dictator? And I think, uh, as was reported, his aides, Trump's aides and the Egyptian aides who were waiting, were all looking at the ground, couldn't believe that he said something like that. But, you know, it is... Uh there is a frankness to it. I mean, I think we have to remember uh, Trump is an extension of what has been U.S. policy for many decades under successive Republican and Democratic uh, administrations, which have supported Egypt uh, through Mubarak and the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces and Mohamed Morsi, despite different types of human rights abuses, uh, with diplomatic, military and economic support. Uh, Trump, though, uh, I think it is important that the rhetoric that comes from the administration does matter also. And when you have one of the, bi the biggest arrest sweep that's been happening in Cairo, and Trump sits and says, uh, there's no problem with that, uh, everyone has demonstrations, CC has brought stability, this really does give a green light uh, for CC to crack down even further. Uh, some administrations have used the State Department to to speak out and say, you know, we urge him to to use self-restraint and things like, and of that nature. So that, I think there is an important uh, factor in rhetoric, even though it is just rhetoric, and we have to remember that U.S. policy hasn't changed much. Um, also, you know, Boris Johnson, who just met with CC also during the UNGA, uh, similarly said, praised the bilateral relationship between the U.K. and Britain. So we can see this as part of a larger uh, change that, that's happening. And then uh, CC saying uh, at this U.N. meeting, let me say you'll always find something like this in our region, especially with political Islam. Right. He's trying to paint uh, what's happening now, uh, blaming it on the Muslim Brotherhood, which is, you know, the bogeyman, and CC's kind of raison d'etre was uh, him coming to power is getting rid of them. And we you, you know, I think this language can be familiar to many people here in the United States when they talk about uh, Islamic terrorism and they try and blame everything on that. That's what Sisi has been trying to do. But this, uh, I think any credible person can see that it has nothing to do with that. And um, finally, if we're looking at the U.S. response, uh, the only, I think, presidential candidate who has said anything is Bernie Sanders, who uh, tweeted a couple of times, uh, most recently last night, uh, saying the right of protesting is uh, an international right, and uh, Egypt should uh, exercise self-restraint. Senator Bob Menendez, Chris Murphy also tweeted uh, similar things, as did uh, uh, a Congress member. His name escapes me. Um, but, but I think we have to really watch what's happening right now in Egypt, because Despite this, these are unorganized protests. There's no political movement backing this. Everything has been shut down politically for years now. So it's spontaneous, it's random, it's hard to call this a movement. Uh, but certainly, I would say that something changed on September 20th, that there was a before and there was an after, and the way Sisi is viewed and the way he's talked about, and knowing that there's this widespread discontent just amongst people themselves, I think will we'll reverberate and have a real effect.